Hello. This is Lynette again. This is the persuasive speech that I did back when I was in Miss Murphy's class. This is an example for you guys. Ready? The title Is the U.S. Constitution, as it was originally written, relevant for the 21st century? To answer that, we must first discover what the U.S. Constitution does and why the framers wrote it the way they did. So first, what is it? The U.S. Constitution was written specifically to ensure that no one person would gain enough power to rule the United States like a king or an emperor. The U.S. Constitution was written specifically on the basis of the separation of powers, which hails back to ancient Greece, and that the government's power should only come from the consent of the governed. That's you and me, the governed. The purpose of the U.S. Constitution is to limit the power of the federal government, not to limit the power of the people. The United States Constitution does not exist to grant you rights. Those rights are already inherent within you. Rather, our Constitution exists to frame a limited government so that those natural rights can be freely exercised. The Bill of Rights tells the government what it cannot do to you. The First Amendment says that Congress shall make no law establishing a governmental religion. It protects your right to freely exercise the religion of your choice, protects your freedom of speech and freedom of the press, means no censoring, and it protects your right to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. The Second Amendment protects your rights to bear arms. The Third Amendment protects you from the government quartering soldiers in your house during peacetime without your official okie dokie. The Fourth Amendment protects you against arrests, searches, seizures of your property without a specific warrant or without probable cause to believe that a crime has been committed. The Fifth Amendment is partially where we get our Miranda rights. It protects you from trial for a major crime except after indictment by a grand jury. It protects you against double jeopardy, protects you from punishment without due process of law, protects you against having to testify against yourself. You've heard of pleading the Fifth? You have the right to remain silent. And it pro prohibits the government from taking your private property for public use without just compensation. Amendment 6, which is also partially where we get our Miranda rights, it guarantees you a speedy public trial for criminal offenses. It requires trial by jury. It guarantees you the right to legal counsel. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you. It guarantees that you may require witnesses to testify in your presence. And it guarantees you the right to know the charges that have been brought against you. As a quick side note, back in 2011, the White House, under then President Obama, wanted the National Defense Authorization Act. This act says that at the discretion of the president, it virtually eliminates all of your Sixth Amendment rights for all American citizens on American soil. The Senate Armed Services Committee wrote the bill. Congress passed it and the president signed it. Senator Carl Levin, who was the senator who actually penned the bill, said on C-SPAN that, quote, the White House under President Obama insisted that the language which would have protected American citizens should be removed from this bill. So you kind of don't have those rights anymore. I'm sorry. 
Amendment 7 assures you trial by jury in civil cases. Amendment 8 protects you against the judiciary imposing excessive bail or fines, and it protects you against cruel and unusual punishment. Amendment 9 protects all of your other rights that are not specifically listed, and it declares that the Constitution and Bill of Rights are not meant to be a comprehensive list of individual rights. Amendment 10 protects states' rights. It reserves to the states and to the people any power that the Constitution does not specifically delegate to the federal government, such as education, environmental protection, healthcare, such as that. So this chart shows the powers that are delegated to the federal government here in the blue area, the powers delegated to the state governments here in the yellow area, and in the center, these are the powers that are shared, such as law and order, levying taxes, establishing courts, so forth. So why did the framers write it like they did? Well, having lived under the tyrannical rule of kings and dictatorial governments, the framers of the Constitution took it upon themselves to secure our God-given individual rights. In 1847, George Lepard wrote of the framers saying that because they, quote, had seen citizens hanged for defying the British king, had seen colonial wives butchered, and the hearthstones of their villages run red with the blood of little children, they knew they could stand mute no longer. In 1776, delegates from each of the colonies gathered in Philadelphia. Lepard wrote that they were, quote, standing, feet pressed on the threshold of freedom, determined to live free or die, they decided on a treasonous course of action. In their Declaration of Independence, the founders listed, quote, a long train of abuses and usurpations and the despotism of King George and his establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. They alluded to the writings of John Locke in his second treatise on civil government when they, quote, declared that they will assume among the powers of earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitle them. They alluded to Locke yet again when they wrote, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all humans are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and that among these rights are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. To secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That's us. As Americans, you inherit the birthright of these freedoms on which the United States was established. Individual freedoms, that which mankind had been denied for thousands of years, were realized at last in the founding of our great nation. But our American way of life and our constitutionally protected freedoms that we hold dear are under attack. Power-hungry politicians, Republican and Democrat alike, have eroded our freedoms. They've passed unconstitutional laws and signed into law unconstitutional executive orders. They're insulted by the idea of American exceptionalism. They're afraid that setting our citizens loose on a free market economy would mean a loss of their power and their right. 
they believe it would be better if we were to abolish individual freedoms. For the last nine decades, communists and socialists calling themselves progressives have installed governmental agencies who are answerable to no one. In 2017, Turning Point USA did a poll among millennials and they discovered that 44% of millennials then wanted to live under socialism. The problem was they didn't realize what socialism ultimately comes to. The birthright of American freedoms is in jeopardy. The greatness of what America once was is almost all but a legend. Not so long ago in America, one success was determined not by what ethnic, gender, minority group he belonged to, or by his social standing at birth, but by his own determination, ingenuity, and work ethic. America became great by recognizing rugged individualism and rewarding individuals' successes, not by punishing and shaming them. President Ronald Reagan spoke of the framers when he said, for the first time in history, the people said, government is not our master, it is our servant. Its only power is that which we, the people, allow it to have. Therefore, I say that the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights, as it was originally written, are entirely relevant and appropriate for the 21st century. And I challenge you to learn your constitutional rights, lest we revert to the days of despotism and desperation. We should always vote to protect those rights. Thank you.